In this video, I'm gonna show you how I fixed the cake that I messed up this week. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. So this week, I had a little mess up with a cake and I was going to film the entire thing, but this cake took me a lot longer to do. So I'm just going to show you what happened when I airbrushed the buttercream, took the cake apart, covered it in fondant and fixed it. <laughs> I don't like to airbrush right on directly on buttercream icing and you will see why. Sometimes it works, but for a deep airbrush color, it, it just doesn't look right. And especially going into the warmer months, the, the color can start to bead if the cake starts to sweat and it can just mess everything up. So I will show you what the cake looks like once it's airbrushed on the buttercream, how I disassemble a stacked cake, cover it in fondant, and then re-airbrush it in the buttercream. So let's get started. I am starting by stacking my cake and I always like to find the front. The front is what I feel like looks most symmetrical and I like to mark that with a little marker. I'm using my ruler. All the tools that I use will be linked in the description and I am measuring my straws with the marker and I always cut the marker off so the marker never goes into the cake. I put the straws in the cake and I'm gonna make sure that it's level. I have a stacking tutorial where I go into detail on how I stack cakes and that will be listed in the description. I'm getting some buttercream down. I got that cake out of the refrigerator. That icing is solid so I'm not gonna mess it up. I'm stacking that on top, make sure it's level and I'm going to dowel that through both cakes down into the cake board and cover the hole with buttercream. And now I don't wanna seam on this bottom part so I'm just squeezing some buttercream on here and I'm smoothing the rest with a palette knife. I also have a video where I go into detail how I do this and I will link that in the description as well. And when that is done, I am going to put that back in the refrigerator until I'm ready to airbrush it. Here's my airbrush machine. I love this. There's an on off switch, the dial which controls the pressure and you must use airbrush coloring in this and I am using some blue and a little black to darken it up. I have this little handy dandy cup here <laughs> that I use to pour in here. I'm getting my cake out of the refrigerator and there it goes pouring that in the little cup. And I have a little paper towel that I can do a test spray on. And I'm starting to spray this on the buttercream cake. And when you are spraying airbrush color, you want to do light coats. Do not do one heavy coat. It's all gonna start beating and falling off the cake. So once I have a light coat on here, I'm going to take a wet paper towel and just carefully clean that excess ink off of that cake board. And let's put that back in the refrigerator. Now I want to take this apart. I put a piece of tape on a cardboard circle. I got that out of the fridge and I am lifting that off of the dowel and I'm sticking the cardboard to the piece of tape and I'm twisting the dowel to remove it and I'm actually rinsing that underwater and I'm putting both of those back in the fridge while I roll out this marshmallow fondant using a fondant smoother to smooth that out. And I got that cake out of the refrigerator. So now I have some piping gel and I'm gonna cover this in fondant. I have videos where I show you how I cover cakes in fondant and I'm going to link that in the description. I'm thinning out the piping gel with some water and now I am covering this cake with the fondant. Covering small cakes with fondant is a pain in the butt because it wrinkles everywhere. <laughs> so I'm pulling the fondant out with, your, with my hands and then smoothing it down with, other hand, with my other hand. Do you see how it gets so wrinkly? These small cakes, they're just so annoying. I have to keep doing little sections at a time and pulling it out and smoothing it down. It takes practice, but with practice, just like anything, you get better. So don't be scared of covering your cakes with fondant. I'm using a fondant smoother to smooth that out and cutting off the excess fondant. I'm using my little weird pinch technique. This is covered in my How I Cover Cakes with Fondant video, and I will link that in the description, like I said before. And I'm using a piece of fondant to smooth the fondant out and carefully cutting the fondant at the bottom. And that looks good, let's put that back in the fridge. And I'm literally doing the same exact thing for the bottom tier. I'm not taking the straws out, I'm just leaving everything in there as it was and covering this in fondant. Now, this is a bigger cake, so much easier. Do you see how many, how it's like less wrinkles as I'm smoothing it out? It's just so much easier to cover bigger cakes with fondant. And I'm doing my pinch technique and doing the same process. 
And now I decided I want to put it on the blackboard. So here's how I change the cake boards, flipping that upside down, carefully removing the board and then flipping it back over. Now, remember that cake was just out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid. I can only handle those cakes when the icing is solid. So I put that back in the fridge to solidify. And now, then I took it back out like an hour later and I'm going to stack it again. So I'm getting the buttercream down and I'm stacking it just like I did before. And now look, that bubble is not in the center. This cake is not level. So I need to lift it up on the left side. So I'm putting more buttercream on the left side and then stacking it again. And now look, that bubble is in the middle and it is level. This is a little easy way to level your cakes. And I can push that dowel all the way through since there's already a hole in that board from the last time that I stacked the cake. And I'm covering that top part with some buttercream and putting that back in the fridge. Now I'm going to airbrush it again. So again, like I said, the name of the game is doing light coats. So I'm just using a circular motion. Why was that so hard for me to say? A circular motion and a light spray. I'm not pulling that trigger back very far and I'm just doing the top section in this cake that I'm making, the middle part is really light. So I'm just doing the top part and the bottom part and leaving the middle part light. And at, once I have one light coat on, I did another light coat after that dried for like 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna put that in the fridge to dry again for another 15 minutes. And then I added one more coat to really deepen it up. And I'm trying to darken it right around the bottom where the borders go. And look how much better that looks. Seriously, it was totally worth doing all that. Do you see on the left is the buttercream, on the right is the fondant, and it's so much smoother. So there you go. Do you see the difference between airbrushing the cake on buttercream icing versus doing it on fondant. The fondant just provides such a smoother surface. When you airbrush buttercream, all the imperfections in the icing show through. And also I feel like if the cake starts to sweat, the airbrush ink will bead up and start to slide down the cake. For some reason, it doesn't really do that on fondant. Now, just know this, if you are airbrushing a cake and it is summer and it is hot out, you must control the temperature of the environment that your cake is in. I have videos talking about how I refrigerate cakes and how I work with refrigerated cakes. You cannot take a cake out of the refrigerator and bring it into a room that has no air conditioning. You are going to get beads of water on the outside and it's going to ruin your cake. So if you do not have access to air conditioning in your house and or your, and your car, then I wouldn't recommend refrigerating cakes. And I don't know how to work with cakes that aren't refrigerated because that's all that I do. But I will link that video talk where I talk about refrigerating cakes below. Now, I know that an airbrush machine is a little pricey, but I'm telling you, once you have it, you are going to use it all the time. I absolutely love my airbrush machine and airbrushing just takes your cakes to another level. I will link the one that I use in the description below. Now, I am so sorry. I am. This is my busy time of year right now and I just do not have the time to edit a full cake decorating tutorial so I couldn't film this entire thing and please don't be mad at me I'm so sorry but this cake was I'll show you the full the finished cake and how adorable is this but it is not my design this was a request that somebody wanted the exact cake and I will put the original right here and I believe it's by cake a doodle I can't remember what it said on the little ribbon at the bottom but I will give the original artist credit because it is an adorable design and the cake that I made is four inch and the bottom tier is a three layer six inch cake I did a three layer six inch so it would be a little taller and I would have a little more room to decorate and this cake feeds about 20 to 25 people and I charged $360. And I also filmed how I did that moon on the top and I'm gonna post that soon. So that just goes to show you, I'm 20 plus years into cake decorating and I still don't get it right all the time. But every time you mess up, it's a lesson learned that you know not to do for the next time. So I think that's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Please keep in touch on socials and check out my website. Everything is listed in the description. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.